Yes, darling, it is the prettiest blue dress that ever was. Too bad, too bad, but I did my best. I tried to warn you. I pleaded with you to look for a tag when you bought the dress, a tag that guarantees its color fast. Too bad, too bad. Too bad, oh, too bad. Remember, look for the tag, I said. Look for the tag. I guess I'll take this one. It is well made, and the material seems good. My little girl is hard on clothes, and they have to be washed a lot. Is the uh, color fast? Well, we don't guarantee colors, but it's a very popular little number, and we've sold a lot of them. Look for the tag, lady. Look for the tag. You can't tell if the color is fast just by looking at the dress. I'll take it. It's such a lovely shade, and at that price, it really ought to keep its color. Oh, some people just won't take my advice. I'm beginning to get a little discouraged. We know exactly how you feel, little fella. But things like this are happening less often today, for most merchants know they can obtain fast color merchandise. They appreciate the value of lasting beauty in color. They know its importance in every phase of modern life. The glory of it, vivid and varied. Lots of it, not only in nature's paintings, but in man-made things as well. Color for commonplace utensils, plastics, paper, and leather articles and many other things we use every day. Color in the fabrics and other decorations of a home. And in the clothes we wear, here is a young lady of undeniable beauty and charm. Her loveliness is augmented by the colors that surround her. Yes, if color should suddenly disappear, how drab our life would be. There, that's better. Be without it for just one short moment, and you will realize the debt we owe our chemists who have in thousands of ways contrived to make our colors as attractive as nature's own. At first, color was derived from natural dyes, so-called, because they were made from things in nature, such as plant juices. But the many natural dyes that man sought out were never intended by nature to be used as coloring agents for textiles. They were not only limited in color range, but most of them lacked such qualities as uniformity and fastness. In the middle of the 19th century, a young English chemist working in his attic discovered that a dye could be made from coal tar. 
This discovery was the cornerstone of the synthetic dye industry. Up to that time, all dyes were of animal, mineral, or vegetable origin. Before the First World War, most dyes were obtained from Europe. But in 1915, the situation became desperate as blockades cut off this vital source of supply. Stocks were dwindling to nothing. Hemlock 1761. John, it looks bad. We're actually scraping down off the storeroom floor. Ah, uh, same thing out our way. We're even using our standard samples. Looks like we'll all have to wear white overcoats next winter. Something had to be done and done quickly. The DuPont Company was one of the first to accept the challenge. They had to start pretty well from scratch. The job was to find out how to make dyes of such color, purity, and fastness that the imported dyes would not be missed. It was going to take a lot of manpower, mind power, and a lot of money to develop not only the know-how, but also the can-do. New plants were built and bigger ones were planned. Special equipment was installed and a big job was underway. Wouldn't it be wonderful if all the work of creating color could be done with a magician's abracadabra as easily as this? But even he must rely on the dye industry for his array of colors. He's a wizard, all right. But the modern dye chemist has a magic of his own that tops that act every day. He puts together two solutions. The resulting chemical action produces a desired color. No, this isn't magic. It's dye chemistry, the result of research and experimentation over a long period of time. Some of the modern dyes require as many as 24 chemical operations, which may take a month or more to complete. The actual mechanical processes involved in making dyes are somber and homely compared with the splendid colors they produce. Watching this work, one would never suspect that here is being created a rainbow range of shades. After the raw materials have been combined chemically in the tanks, the dye is piped to the filter presses where the liquid is removed. From this point, some dyes are made up to exact standards in paste form. Others go to the dryers where the filter cakes are thoroughly dried. are finally ground up to powder. This is one form of the finished product. It is in the standardizing laboratory that all of these new batches of dye from the plant are carefully tested and finally approved for shipment. Samples of the dye are weighed out in exact quantities. Special sample yarn is prepared. The new dye and a standard dye are applied to skeins of the yarn. Experts match the strength and shade of the new lot sample against the standard sample. If there is a variance of shade or strength, it must be adjusted at the plant. 
tests of each new batch are made with great care so that every shipment is up to standard and specification. It would be very simple if a material saturated with any colored liquid could take on its color and retain it. But it doesn't happen that way. This fabric is stained, but it is not dyed. Today, the business of dyeing is highly developed. Dyers must have broad technical knowledge, for in the application of dyes to materials, lack of skill or care will give poor results, even with the best dyes. The beautiful colors we see all about us are due in a large measure to the skill of the dyers and printers. In a general way, the dyes required to satisfactorily color the different types of fiber may be divided into several broad classes, depending upon the nature of the material to be colored. For example, the animal fibers such as wool and silk are dyed best by certain dyes. On the other hand, vegetable fibers such as cotton and linen respond better to a different class of dyes. Synthetic fibers such as rayon and acetate and the newer man-made fibers nylon, orlon and dacron require still other dyes for best results. a number of ways of applying dyes, of which direct dyeing is the simplest operation, as we can see when it's done like this in a laboratory demonstration. This method is employed in cases where the dye itself and the material to which it is applied have a natural affinity for each other. Here the dye is readily absorbed by the material. Unfortunately, in many instances of direct dyeing, the union is not very fast and the colors run in washing. Vat dyes, which are insoluble in water, are now replacing the more fugitive colors. In this dyeing process, they are dissolved by the action of chemicals, which at the same time changes their color. This solution is taken up by the fiber. It is later converted back by another chemical to its insoluble form to become permanently attached to the fiber itself. Because of this fact, Many vat dyes are so fast they outlast the material which they color. They are especially suitable for use on cotton, rayon, linen and other vegetable fibers. They are insoluble in water, stubbornly resist light, acid, alkalis and bleaches. These dyes have the best all-around fastness of any of the dyes of modern chemical science. Let's make a simple test to show the difference between a fast vat dye and a color that is not fast. This vat dye swatch is immersed in the hot solution of soap and washing soda. It holds its color. But when a swatch with a fugitive color is put in, the bleeding is very noticeable. Colors are also applied by printing. On this machine, we can see just how it's done. 
The die in paste form is applied to an engraved copper roller. The fabric takes up the color from the roller. With this method of applying dyes, many beautiful and startling color combinations and effects are produced. Within its great factory at Deepwater, New Jersey, the DuPont Company has set up its technical laboratory staffed by specialists who are equipped with the finest facilities. They are a troubleshooting crowd, these colorists, chemists, chemical engineers and their assistants, always ready to tackle a dyer's problem. What caused a standard dye to produce an off-color? Perhaps yarn not uniform or improperly clean. It could be faulty water or poor temperature control. Right here in the laboratory, they will soon find out and suggest the correction. Frequently, pieces of dyed material are sent in with a request for a dye that will produce the exact color and both the answer and the dye are soon supplied by the color matching department. In the identification department, there are what might be called dye detectives. They are not interested in who done it, but what is it? When a customer sends in samples of an unknown dye or swatches of dyed material for them to identify, these Hawkshaws get to work and no dye can long conceal its identity. They put it through a third degree, and soon they have its number. In the color fastness department, among the extensive files of accumulated data and case histories, one of the most interesting records is the file of color fastness blankets. Here is a complete visual history of a dye what it will do when applied to the fibers and fabrics for which it was intended, and its degree of fastness. These blankets represent as many as 200 different tests. In serving the textile industry, the DuPont Company has done much to assist dyers in improving techniques of application. Developed in the laboratory was the pad steam continuous vat dyeing process, which reduces dyeing time and cost and produces better results. Millions of yards of fabric, principally cotton, have been dyed on full-sized machines based on this experimental model. Another experimental dyeing machine developed by DuPont is the Baroter now being used for commercial dyeing. This machine, as well as other pressure type dyeing machines, has particular value in dyeing the newer man-made fibers. And it also holds out promise for improvement in the dyeing of some of the older fibers. The DuPont Company will be glad to give technical advice to anyone using these processes. Another important phase of dye activity is the basic research carried on at the Jackson Laboratory. It is one of the largest and most active research centers of its kind in the world. Here are scientists who never hold on to an old product or process when they can find a new and better one. Here are born new dyes. Dyes for specific fibers and other uses. Dyes with improved color uniformity as well as improved fastness. So comprehensive are the spheres of research into which these men travel that frequently they include things of great value for use in remote fields. For instance, the development in this country of sulfonylamide. In 1936, important medical research on that remarkable drug was being held up. None was available in this country. 
the doctors at Johns Hopkins appeal to the DuPont Company for help. On checking, it was found that a small quantity had been made seven years before as part of a dye investigation. Having served its purpose there, it was stored with thousands of other chemicals on the chance that another use might be found for it later. The Johns Hopkins request proved the soundness of doing this, and so industrial research was able to contribute to important medical progress. Realizing the need for standardization and uniformity, definite standards and methods of testing for color fastness have been established. All dyes are accordingly tested in the technical laboratory before commercial release in order to assure that when properly applied they will meet these standards. Color fastness to light is measured in a fatometer whose intense light simulates sunshine. Fastness to laundering and dry cleaning are determined in the launderometer using either soap or dry cleaning solutions. Fastness to rubbing is found by the crock meter in which the material is rubbed a definite number of times. Fastness to perspiration is tested with solutions simulating the action of human perspiration, both acid and alkaline. Fastness to pressing is determined by using a hot iron on the goods. These tests really take the measure of a dye. Different colors vary in their degree of fastness, but the properties of a good color must be such that it will meet the standard established for it. The results of these severe tests are available to dyers so that they may know the exact performance of any dye. The degree of fastness required of a fabric depends on what will happen to it and how it will be used during its normal life. Obviously, things that will be exposed to sunlight should resist sunlight. Things that require laundrying should be tub fast. The color of a dance frock should resist perspiration. While some dyes are not fast, they still have many proper uses. Consequently, lower cost and less stable colors are manufactured to give good service for special purposes where good fastness is not needed. Holiday decorations, theatrical draperies, luggage linings come within this class. Today, dyers work closely with converters, designers, textile manufacturers, clothing manufacturers, and retailers, all of whom appreciate the value of lasting color and the increasingly important part it plays in modern styling. The buying public, too, is keenly color conscious. Salespeople everywhere more and more hear the repeated questions, Is it tub fast? Will it fade? Can I wear it in the sun? Will the colors bleed? Nevertheless, there still is a tremendous annual loss of money. When the color fails before the merchandise does, then the consumer either throws the article away before it is worn out or uses it as a shabby second best.
Unfortunately, when shopping, all colored materials look pretty much the same. Style, quality of material, and workmanship may be obvious, but color fastness is something one cannot see by ordinary examination. But the bright note in the picture is the fact that progressive manufacturers and reputable retailers are increasing their sales and protecting their customers by establishing highly respected brand names. By identifying dependable goods with distinctive labels, and more and more we see tags that answer the question, fast to what? This is important, for the word fast itself is too general. Is it fast to sunlight? Is it fast to perspiration? Is it fast to washing? Will the colors last the life of the garment? That is what the buying public wants to know. The housewife is the purchasing agent of the family, and she knows that anything which will give her full value is well worthwhile. She will, when necessary, pay more for things that are color fast simply because she has found out that fugitive colors are false economy. When buying colorful things of cotton, linen, and rayon, ask the question, Is this dress bath dyed? Will I be able to wash it in my machine and hang it in the sun? Oh, yes, madam. See the tag? Now you're talking, lady. Say it again. Is this dress bath dyed? Will I be able to wash it in my machine and hang it in the sun? Oh, yes, madam. See the tag? Say, I like that. Remember Mrs. Johnson? <laughs> she learned her lesson, too. Mommy, Mommy. I'm sorry, Mommy. I was running. And you fell in the mud. Such a pretty blue dress, too. Well, can't I wear it to the birthday party? <laughs> well, not as it is, darling. Maybe Mother can get it washed and ironed in time. Hmm? This blue dress is surely the prettiest one there ever was, isn't it, Mommy? It is, darling. It is. This blue dress surely is the prettiest one that ever was. <laughs> I told you so.